My name is Emily Elizabeth, and this is Clifford, my big red dog. Clifford needed Emily, so she chose him for her own. And the love made Clifford grow so big that the Howards had to leave their home. Clifford's the best friend anyone could know. He's the greatest dog ever. I really think so. Clifford's so loyal. He's there when you call. I love Clifford, the big red dog. So they packed up the family car. And the Howards left the city. They moved to Birdwell Island and their many new friends. There to greet Clifford and Emily. Clifford's so much fun, he's a friend to us all. I love Clifford, the big red dog. Looks like I finally got you, Schultzy, said Detective Mike with a grin. He yelled, Schultzy sighed. I guess you're just too smart for me, Detective Mike. See? That's Schultzy giving up. You really like that book, huh, Casey? Me too. We'll take this one back to the library, and I'll get you another Detective Mike story to read tomorrow. Rock, rock. But right now, I'm going to take a little rest. Why don't you go and play with your friends? Last one to the playground is a rotten dog biscuit. <laughs> Looks like you're the dog biscuit, T. <laughs> Maybe, but I'm also going to be the first one on the merry-go-round. Huh? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Oh, you okay? I'm okay, but what happened to the merry-go-rounds? It's gone. It was here yesterday. <gasps> Maybe somebody took it. Rock, rock, rock. Hi, guys. KC. 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 <laughs> What's going on, guys? The merry-go-round is missing. We think someone stole it. We do? Really? We don't really know what happened to it, but it's gone. Wow, a mystery. Detective Mike could figure out what happened. Who's Detective Mike? Oh, he's this really cool guy in this book series who solves all kinds of mysteries. Come on, I'll show you what I mean. Detective Mike can solve any mystery in the world. Wow. Do you think he could figure out what happened to the merry-go-round? Well, he's not real, but I bet his books could teach us how to figure it out. The first thing Detective Mike usually does is a stakeout. Stakeout? Mm, I love steak! Mm, me too. Mm, mm, me too! Let's do a stakeout! Uh, hold it, everyone! What? A stakeout doesn't mean you get to eat steak. No. no. It means you hide near the scene of the mystery and wait to see who shows up. Oh! But what if no one shows up? Then what do you eat? I think we'd better pack a lunch. <laughs> Guys, forget the food. The important thing is to just be there in case someone shows up. Come on, let's go to the playground. Right, hey! Okay. Detective Cleo, you hide inside the slide. I'll be in the bushes, and Detective Clifford? Uh, Clifford? Where are you? Here I am. Ha! Huh, that's a great hiding place. Now, where's Detective T-Bone? Here he comes. 
What's in the sack, T-Bone? Snacks, just in case. Bye. See you later. Hide. Took the merry-go-round already. <laughs> Did you hear that? Charlie said they took the merry-go-round already. I think he knows who they are. Oh, I didn't hear him say anything. Did you, Clifford? No, I was too far away. How about you, T-Bone? Sorry, I only heard chewy sounds. Well, I heard him. We believe you, Cleo. We just don't know what to do about it. Well, let's see what the book says Detective Mike would do. Huh? It looks like Detective Mike is following that guy. All right, I guess this. Right, he's tailing him. Hey, I've got a tail. Me too. Me too. No, not that kind of tail. Tailing means you follow someone without being seen. Um. Well, great. So let's start tailing Charlie. Come on. Um, I think I better stay here and stake out some more, guys. Just in case. Good idea, T-Bone. Just in case. Hey, look! He's going into the seashell shop. Okay, he's gone inside. This is the time when Detective Mike would do some investigating. What's investigating? That's when you look at something very closely. So why don't you go and look closely at what's in Charlie's crate? Right. <laughs> Looks like curiosity got the best of you this time, Cleo. I was just taking these crabs over to my dad's restaurant. See you later. I don't think those crabs had anything to do with the missing merry-go-round. Let's head back to the park to see how Detective T-Bone's stakeout is going. <gasps> now all the playground equipment is missing. Good thing Detective T-Bone was here. He can tell us what happened. I don't think so. T-Bone! T-Bone, we're back! Uh, what, who, who, huh? Did you see anything, T-Bone? Hey, what happened to the playground? I guess not. Did you see anything at all suspicious, T? I, uh, I don't think so. Okay, then. Let's look in the book and see what Detective Mike would do next. Looks like he's going to follow some tracks. Here's some tracks. I bet following these will give us some answers. Looks like the tracks stop here. Hey, doesn't that truck belong to your human, Bruno? It 
is Bruno's truck. Whoa! Quick! Hide you guys! Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> What is Bruno doing? Look! Oh my gosh! Sheriff Lewis! Gosh, I can't believe Bruno would take the playground equipment. Or Sheriff Lewis either! There's got to be more to it. Oh, what would Detective Mike do in a case like this? It looks like he's listening through the wall with that glass. Well, we don't have any glass to listen with. I know what we can do. Well, Sheriff Lewis, I really think folks are going to like the new color I'm going to paint the playground equipment. I know the kids will like it. Did you hear that, guys? Bruno is painting the equipment. Be able to take all this back to the playground by tomorrow. And Sheriff Lewis is helping him. So that's what's going on. <laughs> I knew no one around here would steal anything. Isn't this great, Detective Casey? Bruno is just painting the playground equipment. Wow, you're right. We did solve a mystery, just like Detective Mike. The mystery of the missing merry-go-round. Clifford! It's story time! You want to hear a speckle story, don't you? Woof, woof. <laughs> I thought so. He's your favorite. Today's story is Speckle and the Camping Trip. Speckle and his friends were excited to be going on their very first camping trip. With everything they needed bundled snugly in their backpacks, off they went in search of the perfect spot to set up camp. Soon they found a wonderful place, and since there was lots to do before nightfall, everyone agreed to take on an important job. Working together, Speckle and Reba set up the tents. Ravi cleared the campground of any twigs or branches. And Luna and Darnell prepared a special camping treat, s'mores! As the sun went down, they gathered around their lantern, sharing stories and enjoying their wonderful adventure in the great outdoors, right in their own backyard. The end. That was a great story. Isn't reading fun? <laughs> I just don't get it, Mac. Why would anyone want to go camping on purpose? I mean, it was nice of Emily Elizabeth to invite us and all, but I'm really going to miss the comforts of home. Oh, well. Come on, Mackie. At least we can try to make ourselves comfortable. <laughs> Let's hurry and get this tent set up. Uh, then we can go for a hike. Sounds cool to me. I love hiking. It was so great of your parents to take us out camping, Emily Elizabeth. Our whole family loves to camp, even Clifford. <laughs> <laughs> I 
think we'll have to find you someplace else to sleep tonight, boy. <laughs> ah, your tent looks great, girls. Uh, but where's Jetta? She's not sleeping with us, Dad. She brought her own special tent to stay in. See? Well, uh, that's quite a tent. Let's go over and see if Jetta needs any help, Emily Elizabeth. Okay. Jetta, are you there? Oh, hi, guys. Need any help? Sure, you can help me hook up my VCR. VCR? I got my computer hooked up, and the battery pack is working great. But I just can't seem to get the VCR working. Wow, Jetta, this looks just like your room at home. I figured since we're going to be way out here in the wilderness, I better bring along some interesting stuff to do. But there are lots of interesting things to do in the woods, Jetta. And none of them need electricity. Come on, kids. Why don't we all hike down to the waterfall? Great. Okay. I'll be right there. I just have to find my scooter. This map says the waterfall is at the end of the trail. Listen, I hear a woodpecker. I can hear a mockingbird. What's that noise? It's Jetta. Hi, guys. See you at the waterfall. Look, a family of raccoons. Raccoons? Where? Where? Jetta, watch where you're going. <laughs> this is really nice. Yep, it sure is pretty up here. And it's so quiet. Yes! I made it to level 20! <laughs> <sighs> we should probably get going soon, everyone. Oh, my. Look, Mark. Those are eastern-tailed blue butterflies. I've never seen one so close up before. Look, there's a whole flock of them. Jetta, you're missing it. No, I'm not. I'm practically at level 21. Jetta, you just have to look. girls, let's get moving. The waterfall should be just ahead. Okay, Dad. Did I miss something? Hey, everyone. I think I hear the waterfall. Whoa! <sighs> Come on, Clifford! Let's hurry! Everybody coming. <laughs> well, I'm not going to get in that 
freezing cold water. That's when I had my fully heated self inflating part of pool. I'm glad you decided to come in and play with me, Mac. <laughs> me too. I think maybe Jetta and I have been missing a lot of fun around here. Oh. Oh. Ah, the perfect temperature. Anyone want to come in my pool with me? <laughs> Are you? It's heated. I have lots of toys. <laughs> hey, I can feel the fish nibbling my toes. <laughs> me too. Whoa, don't just sit there. Jump! Nibble! Do something! Oh, I love cooking outdoors, don't you, Mark? Uh huh. How's your cooking going, Emily? Great! Clifford's doing pretty well, too. Hey, where's Jenna? Isn't she gonna eat with us? She's cooking inside tonight. Ah, dinner's ready, Mac. One for you, and one for me. It does smell pretty good out there, doesn't it? The fire and the pine trees and the hot dogs. But we're having a delicious dinner inside tonight, Mac. Come on, boy. Wow, look at all those stars. It's hard to see them all when we're at home, but out here, it seems like you can see forever. I wish Jenna would come join us. Uh, she's inside watching a video. Maybe she'll come out later. I hope so. Wow. That's pretty amazing, isn't it, Mac? I've never seen a sky like that in our backyard. You know what else was amazing, Mac? That waterfall. I kind of wish I'd stood underneath it, like Vaz and Charlie did. Maybe this camping thing isn't so bad after all, huh? Oh. Aw, what is it? Do you want to go out and be with everyone else? Huh? Well, okay, boy. If you really want to, I guess I could go out with you. Did you see that, Emily Elizabeth? That was absolutely amazing! It sure was! Thank you for inviting me camping, Emily Elizabeth. <laughs> You're welcome, Jetta. Gotcha! Hey! You're not my hedgehog toy, but you sure are a great toy! Hi, Cleo! Cleo, you found my bunny squeak toy! Uh, Mrs. Diller just, uh, bought this toy for me. Oh. Sometimes it seems like making up a story will make things turn out the way we want them to. Um, I don't really feel like playing right now, guys. But most of the time, it's a much better idea to just tell the mm -hmm. truth. 
T-Bone wait. This is your bunny squeak toy, T-Bone. But you said Mrs. Diller just bought it for you. I made that up. The toy belongs to you. Thanks, Cleo! Telling the truth isn't always the easy, but it is always the right thing to do. That's why Clifford's big idea for today is be truthful.